Welcome back, Girish. Thank you. Uh, okay, so what we are going to do in this one? What 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 is the learning objective of this uh, video? Basically, we are going to look at different transactions while buying a currency. Okay, so, so what you are saying is we look at uh, the learning objective is looking at different transactions, transactions while buying currencies. While buying currencies or converting one currency into another. Okay, right. Perfect. So you can compare this slide with, uh, for example, if you are going to buy something in the market. Okay. You go to a market, you want to buy something, you have different modes of buying things. Right. So let's right. let's look. So, so you're saying X goes to market. Right. Perfect. He can buy by giving cash. Okay. So option is that he gives cash. He, he gives credit card. Maybe. Credit card. Yeah. Maybe he can buy by giving partial amount in cash, converting the balance amount into installments. Right. So there cash, are different methods EMI, of buying a thing. Etc. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can go back to the slide. So whenever you are converting or buying currencies, mm -hmm. the most important thing is the spot transaction. Okay. Right. We name it as a spot transaction. Right. Why do we name it as a spot transaction? Because the most important thing is that immediate delivery is the basis. The name spot emerges from the thing that on the spot. Okay. You are going and getting the thing on the spot. Okay. Right. So the immediate delivery is the basis. Right. And the next thing is that standard settlement is T plus two days. Now it is very important to understand these two statements which are like immediate delivery is the basis right and standard settlement is t plus two days here t stands for transaction okay so right. t you're saying stands for transaction day transaction day okay right. both these statements are a little bit contradictory mm -hmm. because one says immediate de delivery uh -huh. the other says standard settlement is t, t plus, plus two. two days yes now <coughs> look at this perspective for example if you approach a bank mm -hmm. you want your rupees to be converted into dollars right so right. you're saying let's say you go to a bank for converting of rupees into dollars into yes. dollars yes now we here are talking about a retail transaction and this is naturally a retail, retail transaction. transaction okay you as a customer go to a bank you want you are going abroad and uh, you want to convert your rupees into dollars right <coughs> so you go to a bank you get the rates, right. what is the prevalent rate right. and you complete the transaction that for example if you say that you want to convert 5000 rupees into dollars at the pre prevalent rate of USD INR is equal to 50 rupees. Right. So what would be the amount you will get? So you are saying you want to get 5000 rupees to dollars yes. and dollars you are saying is at 50, 50 rupees a dollar right? Yes. Is that what you are saying? So you, you will get like 100 dollars. 100 dollars. Perfect. So you have completed your transaction, hmm. but for example, this I was talking about retail level. If you are a corporate level, yeah, you want to get this account credited into your bank account. Right. Right. So whenever this account is credited, it right. will normally take a time of t plus two days. So for example, if you are transacting on Monday. Right. You will get this amount reflected in your account on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Okay. But the important thing is that the prevalent rate would be of Monday. Applicable. Yes, Monday. Okay. On Wednesday, the rupees will get it credited into your account at the rate fifty, not the prevalent rate on Wednesday. Okay. So what you're saying is, I'll just quickly repeat. You're saying at retail. For example, if you're going out and you said that you have to convert five thousand to dollars, and you're saying that uh, a dollar is uh, a dollar is worth fi uh, fifty rupees, yes. Then you're saying you'll get close to hundred dollars yes. on the same day. On the same day, you'll get it because uh, it's a very nominal transaction. It's a nominal transaction, but you're saying if if the, this was in a let's say a corporate account, a corporate account, and and you went to a bank for for a transaction which is similar to this one. There is going to be some kind of settlement because the amount has to be transferred to the corporate bank's account. Yes, definitely. and this you say will happen in t plus two days. Or we can look at uh, a different uh, so if you, if, example. Yeah, so I just the, quickly uh, finish this one. Yeah. So you're saying that if on Monday you went on for the transaction, mm -hmm. your account will be credited by Wednesday. By Wednesday. And this would happen on the settlement date of Monday. Yes. Right. So we're using the applicable rate of dollar of Monday. Settlement of dollar. Basically, your uh, whole transaction gets completed on Monday, right? But the amount would be finally reflected on Wednesday. Okay. 
because that is the normal time which takes in settling accounts perfect understood we'll we'll understand it with another example say we'll take another example of uh, exporters which is quite a relevant example okay so you want to do you want to take another example yes let's take another example so for example uh, an exporter has like, received uh, say like uh, $50000 okay so exporter receives $50,000 dollars yes from his export proceeds so yes. something which he has exported to okay. us okay right so if he approaches a bank and uh, very important thing it is not necessarily you physically approach a bank you you already know that all these transaction can be over through a telephonic uh, thing and understood so he goes to a bank or he calls a bank or he calls a bank let's say he calls a bank he calls a bank okay and he asks for the prevalent rate which is uh, in the market Okay, so the and let's say the prevalent rate is again fifty rupees. Fifty rupees. Okay. Say for example, the spot is trading at fifty rupees. Prevalent rate, or let's say the spot. Spot rate. Spot rate is one USD is equal to one USD equals to fifty INR. Right. Yes. So he gives a go ahead to his bank mm -hmm. that uh, okay, I'm fine with this transaction. Right. And the transaction would be completed at the prevalent rate of. One USD is equal to fifty INA, but the final amount, right. which would be a thousand dollars, would be credited to the exporter's account on T plus, T plus two, days. two days. So, for example, if this transaction is on Monday, right. his account would be credited by Wednesday. So, what you are saying is, for example, this transaction now happens on a Monday. Mm -hmm. This whole transaction, which is a composition of this mm -hmm. and the conversion, mm -hmm. this. You are saying the credit will happen to his account. Yes. Here we'll use the word settlement. Okay, so we are so saying the, the settlement, settlement will happen on on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, that is T plus two days. So on Wednesday, you the exporter can expect the account, mm -hmm. the money to be uh, credited in his account. Now yes. the settlement will happen on yeah. T plus two. Okay. Plus two. So I'll I'll quickly recapture this one. Fifty thousand dollars. He calls a bank and the prevalent spot rate is fifty INR. Mm -hmm. This conversion happens on Monday, mm -hmm. where he gets thousand USD mm -hmm. as on as on the spot rate of Monday. Spot rate, but the settlement will happen on Wednesday, which is called the T plus two, and the account will be transferred to the uh, exporter. Yes. Is that is 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 this how it works? This is perfect. Perfect. So let's let's just quickly go back to our slide. And one important thing is that uh, USD CAD, which is Canadian dollar, yeah, it has an exception and settles on T plus one day. Okay, so USD CAD is an exception because it settles on T plus one day. One that day. might be because of the banking norms yeah, between the two countries. Yes. Okay. And one more important thing is that uh, since it is a very closely governed market, uh, there is nothing such as logic which is there in the market in terms of say your uh, quoting of currencies. Or settlement, mm -hmm. so it is uh, basically the things which have been prevalent in this market. So there is no specific logic why it takes T plus one days. Okay, it has been like that in this market. Okay, and this is the convention of the market. So th this is what you're saying is the conventional Con norms. Yeah, conventional norms. Okay, perfect. We will learn more about this in our further slides. So, what is the, what is important is spot is image at delivery standard settlement is T plus two and USD CAD is T plus one. Yes. I am quite sure the viewers will have understood how a T plus two settlement works. Yes. So let's let's quickly look at forward. Forward. Yes. yes. Now the most important thing about forward is that it is basically a contract of exchange between two parties for a future date. Okay. Right? So any transaction which is settling more than T plus two days mm -hmm. would be a forward. Transaction. So anything which is T plus two more is mm -hmm. a forward. Is a forward. A very simple definition. Yes. Perfect. We'll uh, learn more about the forwards in a further slide. Okay. Here we'll. The only difference between which you have to note is that in a spot transaction it is T plus two days. Right. And forward transaction it is T plus two, more than T plus two days. Okay. Right. Understood. Understood. So, so, so what are these? What are these uh, terms? These are basically the terms used for uh, your settlement dates. Okay. Right. So, for example, if you want to convert your uh, say dollars into rupees as of today only, right? If you want your account to get credited today only, right? That would be known as a value cash transaction. Okay. Right? It's known as a cash transaction. 
okay so so let's say if i'm uh, if i'm planning to take a vacation somewhere mm-hmm. and i go to a bank for converting rupees into dollars and yes. I, and the dollar is given to me on my hand on the, that's on a your hand cash or your or credit to to your bank account that's a value cash transaction that's happened account. on the trade day yes on on the same so on let's say same. this was happening on a monday monday this has finished off as of monday monday that would be your cash transaction transaction over as of monday monday yes. okay now if the transaction gets over by trade date plus 1 it is known as a tom transaction okay so i so tom usd standard. cad usd cad is also a tom transaction yeah. no usd cad is a spot, spot transaction. transaction but it is uh, it is get settled on t plus 1 days mm. otherwise all your transaction which are not in usd cad right are known as value tom Value so for example if you if you take the so, above example so let's say you went on a monday and the transaction settled on a tuesday, tuesday. this is a, a tom transaction tom transaction okay right trade date plus 2 we have already done we we figured this out spot we we've discussed this at length yeah and uh, anything anything trade date uh, plus 3 plus or two any or more yeah. which is trade date plus 3 or any other later date it's called a forward forward contract and you said we'll discuss this in length in our future videos future videos perfect so uh, so basically you will have uh, four types of transaction one right. would be your cash transaction right. wherein settlement is date uh, is done on the same date right then you have a tom transaction Absolutely. wherein the settlement would be trade date plus 1 right then you have a spot transaction where is uh, trade date plus 2 right and a forward transaction anything more than trade date plus 3 absolutely so i'm quite sure that the whole concept is very clear now yes. let's just quickly go ahead and look at uh, the concepts of base currency and term currency yes. so when we are talking about uh, foreign exchanges uh, exchanging one currency for another right. we we'll definitely have two currencies involved in the exchange right right so first currency is called the base currency and right. the second is known as the term, term currency, currency. Very now important. again uh, when we were talking about market conventions these are the market convention base currencies and term currencies this is again a market convention yeah. that you are saying so and the most important thing is that exchange rates are always quoted in per unit of a base currency base currency absolutely so we'll uh, learn more through the example so when you are talking about usd inr USD is a base currency and Absolutely. INR is a term, term currency. currency. Now it does not mean that you cannot quote in INR USD terms. You can, but n- normally the market convention is that it is quoted this way USD INR. Right. Right. So for example, if you take an example of Euro USD. Right. So Euro becomes your base currency. Euro will become your base, base currency and, and USD, USD will, will become be your term term currency. Perfect. So, for example, if we take an illustration, USD INR is quoting at forty-five point five zero zero and moves and to forty-five point seven five double zero. What does it mean? It means that the USD base currency has, has appreciated as it is buying more of term currency. Absolutely. Right? If you can see, like uh, earlier, USD was buying forty-five point fifty of INRs. Right. Now it is buying forty-five point seven five of INRs. Uh, and and I think from the exam perspective also this this concept needs to be very very clear yes, on what's a base currency, what's a term yes. currency, what's an appreciation, or what's a depreciation. Yes. It is very important because uh, there would be slightly confusing questions where the the examiner would try to confuse you between the terms um, base and base term. currency, term currency, and appreciation. Yes. Right. So when one currency is depreciating, it means that the other currency is depreciating. Absolutely. We will just quickly look ahead. Mm-hmm. So again, your when your base currency is appreciating, your term currency is depreciating. True. So if you had bought go long base currency, for example, if you had bought dollars right. at forty five fifty and they move to forty five seventy five, it means you, you tend have to gain. gain. You tend to gain. Yes. This is how you uh, gain or lose in the currency market. Right. And if you had got if you had bought uh, term currency, right. for example, if you have bought uh, INA, it does not mean you have necessarily you have to buy dollars or rupees. in a currency pair it is it's your free will whether you want to buy a base currency or a term currency right so if you have bought a term currency right. you have, you would tend to lose lose in this lose absolutely because because the base currency has gone up so yeah. when i say the term currency is depreciated you will lose yes. uh, you and, and going short would mean that you're selling yes okay selling. and uh, one important thing very important question in a usd inr quote uh, what would be 
the numerator and what would be the denominator uh, the usd would be the denominator and would be the numerator yes definitely. because usd itself the is word a base, is a base currency, base currency. that's why it's 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 going to be always in the